very good evening and welcome to a brand new edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our News First studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudan Nayak and let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Do not sign agreements with America. Terrors of the three sects voice their objection. Acting IGP directs attention towards allegations which claim investigations into Dr. Shafi are not being conducted aptly. Teachers and principals to go on sick leave due to salary issues yet again. America agrees to resume trade talks with China, agrees not to impose additional tariffs. Now the story is in detail. The Sri Lanka Public Health Inspectors Association charges that the governor of the Western province had taken measures against filing legal actions on the cases where stock of food unsuitable for human consumption was raided in Mabima, Piagama. Issuing a communique, the association stated that 758,000 kilograms of grams unsuitable for human consumption were found during a raid conducted on the 25th of June at a store belonging to an individual named Noor Muhammad Muhammad Siddiq. Thereafter, health inspectors of Markola South and Heyanthurua sealed the store. The health inspectors said that the stock of grams consisted of dal, green gram and cowpea which were infected with foreign substances used on insects and bird droppings. However, the secretary of the Sri Lanka Public Health Inspectors Association, Mahindra Balasurya, states that the governor of the Western Province, A.J. M. Musammil, has threatened and obstructed the duties of the officers who carried out the raid. A case has been filed at the Mahara Magistrates Court by public health officials. The governor of the Western Province had received information regarding this and had asked public health officers to arrive at the governor's office. Based on this complaint by the governor, the public health officials along with the provincial director of health services had travelled to the storage facility. At that time, the governor of the western province had acted in an irate manner and had also threatened the officials stating that they would be transferred. He had also ordered to not take the case forward. However, since this is an issue regarding the quality and standard of food consumed by the general public of the country, the public health officials would not drop this case. As the Sri Lanka Public Health Inspectors Association, we will take all relevant action from the side of the officials. A special Sangha meeting under the theme Dai Sami Suraksha Vodisa Hilabik Shuangshe Punaragamane was held in Matugama today. This special Sangha meeting was chaired by the Anunayakas of the Malvatu and Askari chapters and was attended by the Mahasangha representing the three sects. The historic Matugama Convention was unveiled today, which includes a resolution aimed at securing state security and eradicating Islamic extremism. <laughs> According to Minister Mangala Samaravira, every cloud has a silver lining. Likewise, with the tragic April 21st attacks, we received 480 million from the USA. Every time we face a tragic incident, our politicians attempt to take political advantage of it. Similar to the Counterterrorism Act, there are several other agreements that have been in effect for some time. These agreements are an attempt to make Sri Lanka a colony. One of those agreements is the AXA agreement. Then there is the SOFA agreement and the Millennium Challenge Corporation. When the US ambassador met with the chief prelate of the Askiri chapter, we clearly asked her about these US agreements. She said these agreements are still being drafted. We then questioned her over the various remarks made by politicians in this regard. These remarks are included in the draft agreements. If such agreements are formed with other countries, they must first go for a people's referendum. The politicians appointed as public representatives can easily be influenced with money. Prior to an election, we will summon the main figures. We will question them and ask them whether they agree with this. We are fulfilling our responsibilities from our end. However, the general public must now make a decision. Will the people vote for individuals who bear such ideas? <laughs> John C. Spence now cover three Kunamale Nathalai Varai Amerika Wing. The John C. Stennis ship is already docked at the Trincomalee Harbour. 
the ship can accommodate 6,000 Navy personnel and 100 aircraft. Recently, the Prime Minister had visited the ship when debates were taking place in Parliament. Their plan is to give America 2.1 million acres of land connecting the Colombo port to the Trincomalee Harbour. The width of this land will be six miles. I obtained this information from a document I read. They even brought forward the Land Act to facilitate this plan and the Land Act has already been approved. According to this act, both private and state lands can be taken over instantly. According to the document I read, a price of an acre is 24 rupees. However, the price of a sugar bun is 25 rupees. Venerable Professor Induragare Damratanatera expressed the following views regarding the statement made by the Prime Minister regarding the Tera. This is a country where the Sangaraja Teras were poisoned. The Prime Minister recently said this is a Niganta Sasanaya. Is this a Niganta Sasanaya? Who gave them the authority to make such remarks? Therefore, this is a time where we should all speak out in a straightforward manner. I agree and approve the statements made by Venerable Dr. Madhagama Dhammananda Thera and Venerable Professor Induragare Dhammaratna Thera. Teachers and principals trade unions have decided to take trade union action based on four issues, including the removal of salary anomalies. Teachers and principals trade unions convened a media briefing today. All teachers associations agreed to step up into a trade action based on four points. We urge the government to remove all salary anomalies, allocate 6% for education, restoration of windows and orphans pension, which was repealed in 2015, and removal of unnecessary documentation, which obstructs the learning progress of children. We decided to have it on the 18th and 19th of July. Over 50,000 teachers and almost 15,000 principals from 10,000 schools will request for sick leave and launch a strike action. During the past four and a half years, we have officially requested the President, Prime Minister and Minister of Education for an appointment to discuss these matters. Unfortunately, up to now, we haven't received a chance. GCEAL exams will be held in August. We are still discussing if to launch a strike action during the examination. Railway trade unions inconvenience the passengers by staging strike actions citing salary anomalies. Officials of the health sector, including doctors, launch trade union actions risking the lives of the patients. Is it fair to launch a strike action jeopardizing the future of students? <laughs> ගෙවේ <laughs> <laughs> Either the trade unions or the government should understand how we are going to live in this country if this is how they govern this nation. This is not only affecting us anymore, it is affecting the future of our children. They are playing with the future of our children. We are not responsible for the problems the teachers and the government have. Dr. Chayampati Vikramaratna, an attorney at Law Lal Vijayanayak, headed the drafting of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. However, amid several complications created by the amendment, those who drafted the amendment have expressed their views to the media criticizing the amendment. 
Speaking to the island newspaper, Dr. Jampati Vikramaratna says if the initial draft of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was approved in its original form, the prevailing issues would have not arisen. The MP further adds that amendments introduced after the 19th Amendment to the Constitution had weakened the latter. If the initial draft of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was passed in Parliament, this situation wouldn't have arisen. You wouldn't have two authorities fighting over state expenditure heads. This amendment was sabotaged. We had to make it lighter to obtain a two-thirds majority. The best example is the composition of the Constitutional Council. <laughs> If the original draft of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was approved, there would be no use of a president. A conspiracy took place while preparing the draft itself. Preparing and drafting a constitution and its amendments is the responsibility of the Minister of Justice. However, this was gazetted as a subject that comes under the purview of the Prime Minister. The President complied with the request made by the Prime Minister. Though it was made a subject ministry under the purview of the Prime Minister, I had to look into this matter as the Minister of Justice. The Attorney General's Department and Legal Draftsman Department comes under the Ministry of Justice. This was changed more than ten times. Finally, I informed the President regarding the flaws of the amendment and asked him not to agree to it. Finally, he summoned those in charge and discussed this matter. The Prime Minister did not want to keep hold of certain powers. The Prime Minister would have been the leader of Parliament and the leader of the Cabinet. If this happened, there will be no point in having a President. The President could not change this even after informing the Prime Minister. However, the people of this country were fortunate. The independent judiciary gave a clear decision. If the sentence was to be amended, two-thirds majority was not enough and a public referendum was required. The amendment must be presented in Parliament and approved with a two-thirds majority. At present, the President can take the initiative. Ultimately, it is the Parliament that must amend the Constitution. It is now clear that the country cannot go forward with the power struggle between the two points of authorities. There should be one power of authority. We should either go forward with a complete presidential system or a parliamentary system. The President came into power with the promise of bringing the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. They said the executive powers of the President must be reduced and must be vested in Parliament. They claimed that the powers vested in the President were being transferred to the Prime Minister. None of this has taken place through the 19th Amendment. There is only one power that was transferred to the Prime Minister from the President, and that is the power to appoint ministers. The President's powers have been reduced and transferred to the Parliament that represents the people and the Constitutional Council that is appointed through the Constitution itself. Those who have no knowledge in drafting a Constitution made this. The 19th Amendment was drafted to suit the needs of the NGOs. If Ranil Vikramasinghe, Mahindra Rajapaksa, Sambandhan and the JVP can all agree to abolish the 19th Amendment, 2020 will be a good year for Sri Lanka. The Criminal Investigations Department has informed courts that the police had committed mistakes when arresting Dr. Mohammed Shafi Shahabdeen of the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital. Now, this was revealed when the police reported the current progress of the investigations in question. The CID is also taking steps to inform the Minister of Defence that Dr. Mohammed Shafi Shahabdeen cannot be held further under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Dr. Mohammed Shafi Shabdeen, who was employed at the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital, was arrested on the 25th of May over three allegations. The allegations include obtaining money from a terrorist organization and utilizing such funds 
to purchase assets and fulfill the objectives of the respective terrorist organization. To avoid violence that may have arisen due to the tense situation that prevailed in the area and the possibility of Dr. Shafi going into hiding. The suspect was produced before the Kurunagala magistrate yesterday along with the 210 page B report by the CID. The report states that based on the reports submitted to the CID by the superintendent of the Kurunagala police, Mahinda Disanayaka, a statement was recorded from Dr. Shafi on the 24th of May. The B report further adds that the 25th of May has been mentioned as the date in documents following the arrest. The B report further states that sufficient information was not available prior to the arrest of Dr. Shafi. Dr. Shafi Shabdin is further detained by the CID and the progress report on the ongoing investigation is due to be produced to courts on the 11th of next month. Meanwhile, Venerable Aturulia Thero has submitted a complaint to the acting IGP regarding the ongoing investigation into Dr. Shafi's matter. Venerable Athrali Ratnathera has submitted a written complaint to the acting IGP charging that ongoing investigation into Dr. Shafi's matter is not taking place properly. Accordingly, the acting IGP requested for a report in this regard from the senior DIG in charge of the CID. Based on information in this report, actions will be taken in the future. Let's now draw attention towards the views expressed by Reverend Brother Charles Thomas at an event held at the Bishop's College Auditorium in Colombo yesterday. Speaker Karuja Suri and several others were also present at this occasion. <laughs> Many of the responsible leaders in this country are present here. I say this with much responsibility, that the problem Zaharan created was solved in two days. If so, who is prolonging solving this? If someone is doing this with some sublime political and ulterior motives, they will be able to do so by blinding the law of this country. But I say this with much responsibility. God listens to the pleas and prayers of the people and he will answer them. In order to ensure a bright future for our children, we should take the responsibility of appointing a good leader who is not a thief or a thug, but someone who can lead this country properly. If he can play cricket well, he is sent to parliament. What is he to do in parliament? Play catch? This is the mindset of the people in our country. When they act well and their teledramas gain popularity, they are sent into parliament. So what do they do in parliament? They act but they themselves realize that they cannot act as good as ones already in parliament. People should stop making these wrong decisions. The few people who are attempting to sell this nation for political and personal gains and to gain standings through Western nations should stop defining this nation. <laughs> Now, when it comes to the presidential elections, there will be public meetings held in line with their presidential campaigns. I suggest that you sing that song when they come on to the stage. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the views expressed by various parties about the presidential candidacy. <laughs> Kumara Velgama had attended an SLFP meeting recently. During the past couple of weeks, MP Velgama maintained a very straightforward approach. Even during the 52-day political turmoil, he was of the stance that the political conspiracy was wrong and indecent. However, we now suspect that they are trying to put forward Kumara Velgama as the presidential candidate from the SLFP because there is no one. The SLFP has come to such a state. <laughs> There are various views and opinions regarding the presidential candidate by different political parties. However, there is no reason to think twice. By January 2020, it will be Gotha Be Rajapaksa who takes oaths as the president of this country. He represents the people's hope and the country's hope. Gotha Be Rajapaksa will lead the SLFP, the Podujana Perumuna and all parties against the UNP. Those from the other side are talking about the Rajapaksas. The problems within the family have already started. Regardless of their candidate, we have the best presidential candidate from our end. 
we have a presidential candidate that can succeed. We will announce our presidential candidate in the beginning of August amid thousands of people in Colombo. <laughs> On the 7th and 8th of next month, we will hold a massive rally. Throughout these two days, we will rally against this government. We will ask the government to go home. We are not doing this with the intention of bringing in a Rajapaksa government. A people-friendly campaign will be brought before the people on the 14th of next month. We have to gather people there. That is our responsibility. We will bring forward a new solution. At present, most political parties are competing with each other to organize large-scale rallies in Colombo, bringing large swathes of people from all over the country. Now, this is merely an attempt to secure victory at the presidential election. What you witnessed in the previous news items were the opinions of both the ruling party and the opposition on the power uh, struggle for pr presidency. But let me ask you this. When have these political parties gathered on the streets to oppose the dominant and salient issues existing in the country? When did they invite you for a rally being held, let's say seeking to end the human elephant conflict or to discover a solution for the large number of issues of our very own citizens in the north living in dire straits due to the drought? I believe your answer to this question would be a resounding no. Is this not the ideal time to take to the streets against power-hungry politicians who are now attempting to secure prime positions in the country's political hierarchy by using us, the people, as scapegoats? Up next is the voice of the people. This is the Kimbisa Demetagalyaya village in Sigiria. The sole livelihood of the residents of this village who do not even have access to basic necessities is agriculture. By today, even Mother Nature has disrupted their already rugged lives since sufficient rainfall has not been received for the cultivation of paddy fields. Wild elephants encroaching their agricultural lands is the latest of a string of difficulties faced by these people on a daily basis. Last night, a father of two who attempted to protect his crops from wild elephants lost his life, leaving two children without paternal love and protection. <laughs> We are facing many difficulties as of the late because of wild elephants. They enter the village throughout the day and night. Most of my banana cultivation has been destroyed. Last night when I was coming back, I found out a person was attacked. Area residents suggest an electric fence being built from Digampataha to Kimbisa Palutava would resolve this issue. This is the Gangeyaya Batuhena Road falling under the purview of the Bakamuna Divisional Secretariat. This road, which spans for around 3 kilometers, is used by nearly 1,000 people daily. Although this road, which was in a dilapidated state, was constructed and converted into a carpeted road, these visuals bear evidence to prove that it has not been done effectively. As a result, those who utilize this road carried out this demonstration to convey to authorities that such ineffective developments done utilizing their tax funds are simply unproductive. What right do officials have to engage in malfeasances, pilfering the funds of their very own tax-paying citizens? That is the question these people pose to authorities. Well, time for a short commercial break. Stay with News First. We will be right back.
Life is a beautiful journey of many challenges. Believe in yourself. Move forward with courage and determination. The right support and companionship will give strength and guidance to achieve your desires. Be confident. Be victorious. So go ahead. Explore life. We are with you. Alliance Insurance. I am Parame Vasanthi Maristella. I have a dream to bring glory to my motherland. I have a dream to gift her an Olympic medal. This is your chance to dream with me. Welcome back. You're with News First. The U.S. Special Representative for Iran, Brian Hook, said yesterday that European companies have a choice either to do business with the United States or do business with Iran, as Europe announced that a new system to allow trade with Tehran was in place. The comment by Brian Hook came as European countries made a last-ditch effort to prevent Iran from breaching the terms of the 2015 nuclear deal, a move that could add to soaring tensions in the Persian Gulf. Meanwhile, the United States has deployed F-22 stealth fighters to Qatar for the first time, adding to a build-up of U.S. forces in the Gulf amid tensions with Iran. Yesterday, the U.S. Air Force Central Command said in a statement that the Air Force F-22 Raptor stealth fighters have been deployed to defend American forces and interests. On a separate note, foreign news agencies reported yesterday that Iran had formally lodged a complaint to the U.N. Security Council over a drone attack that violated its airspace. The Pentagon denies that the drone entered Iranian territory. The geopolitical moves now taking place in the Pacific region amply demonstrates the real possibility that should Sri Lanka sign up the SOFA agreement. It is highly likely that American troops and other military assets will be moved to Sri Lanka. This will happen all too easily to the detriment of Sri Lanka's non-aligned policy. Crude oil prices followed an increasing trend last week, mainly due to tensions between Iran and the U.S. However, oil prices eased yesterday in the cautious market as traders eyed the meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping at the G20 summit and next week's OPEC meeting. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, and non-members including Russia, known as OPEC Plus, will hold meetings on the 1st and 2nd of July in Vienna to decide whether to extend their supply cuts. According to international commodity, analysts say that the increase or decrease in oil prices will depend on OPEC's plus decision to extend oil production cuts. The analysts add that the oil prices will also curb on how much Saudi Arabia and Russia will curb oil production. More news coming your way on the other side of this short commercial break. Stay with News First. I am Parame Vasanthi Maristella. I have a dream to bring glory to my motherland. I have a dream to gift her an Olympic medal. This is your chance to dream with me. Welcome back. Moving on to news overseas. The annual summit of the Group of 20 Nations has entered its second and final day in Osaka, Japan. At the top of the agenda is the ongoing trade war between China and the United States, the world's two biggest economies. Collectively, the 19 countries represent more than 80% of the world's economic output and two-thirds of its people. 